Today we're going to go through the steps for downloading and installing the software that you're going to use with your Xtool. So go to xtool.com and then click on software. And when you click download, it's going to just activate and go down to the Xtool Creative Space downloads. There's all kinds of options here. I'm on a Windows based computer, so I'm going to click Windows. And I don't know if you saw the little flash, but it went to my downloads folder. And there it is right there. So now when I double click on that, I can go through the whole install process. I know this is really riveting video to watch software install, but we got to do the boring stuff before we can do the fun stuff. So let the software do its magic and just follow the prompts and go along and finish. Welcome to the Xtool Creative Space. Let's start off by connecting to our device. So we're going to click up here in the upper right corner. And for this first time, we're going to be connecting with the USB cable. Then we're going to go up to the upper left hand corner under settings. I'm going to change my settings from um, millimeters to inches. Next, I'm going to click on that little gear in the upper right corner, and that's going to bring up our basic info. And let's check for some updates just to make sure, even though we just installed it's always good to check. Now we're going to connect our Wi-Fi, and you'll see it's trying to automatically pick up my Wi-Fi. I am going to cover up that information because you don't need to see my Wi-Fi name or password, but there is a little refresh button underneath here. So if it's not connecting, you can click refresh, type in your password and get it to connect. If you're having any problems, you can try restarting your router, but just the refresh should help it to connect. And you'll see the little green button spinning, and then you get this message to show that it's complete. Is some other information under this basic info window, but we'll dive into that a little deeper another time. From here, we're going to connect and now we're going to click on the Wi-Fi button because we've set up the Wi-Fi connection. So now we want to, instead of using that USB cord that I have stretched across my craft room, uh, I want to be able to connect via Wi-Fi. So you can see it's taking some time and it wasn't connecting. So we had to do some troubleshooting. When I clicked on that device not found button, it took me straight to their troubleshooting page, which I loved. And they gave me different things to try, step-by-step -step directions, so I could follow through and say, okay, did this, tried that. And there's different troubleshooting tips for the different types of machines. Really detailed with pictures. So follow along. I'm not going to explain it all to you because they do a great job of really walking you through the steps to figure out why your device is not connecting. In the end, what ended up working for us was totally closing the software and reopening it. Now, this time when I click on the connect and go to Wi-Fi, it still takes a little bit of time, but eventually the device did show up under the Wi-Fi tab. And then I was able to double click on that. You'll know it's connected because this little button over here will say refresh instead of telling you to connect. And then it's going to show you kind of a preview of the inside of the X tool. So let's place an image to engrave. And in the Xtool world, it's called shapes. 
And honestly, the first time I clicked on this, I expected to just see like a dozen basic shapes, but there's different categories for plants and animals and festive holidays, all kinds of things. So they really give you a lot of free shapes to get started with. So I'm picking a snowflake. When I click on my image that I'm going to use, I can see on the right side panel, I can tell it, do I want to score, engrave, or cut this design? So I'm going to click on engrave and this filled in the snowflake because now it's going to engrave or fill in the whole thing. So score would just be the outline, engrave fills the whole center, cut, it would be cutting through for that same design. There's different settings for the speed and the force, um, but I'm just going to start with the basics and let it do its default. I clicked the refresh button and now because I had placed the wooden tag inside the X tool, the little picture of the wooden tag actually shows up, which is great because now I can play with this little snowflake, resize it and center it right on the tag. I was looking around for a tool to kind of make it snap to or adjust right to the tag, but there is no such option. So just kind of eyeball it, but at least you have a preview image to kind of help guide you. Now let's take a look at the material. There is a pull down in the materials that lets you pick predefined settings for different materials. So these would be some of those materials that came with the X tool in the box. And there is one for a wood tag. So I just selected that. I'm just going to leave the presets alone and hit the process button down in the lower right corner. Then you get a little preview of the actual design. So you can press that start button in the upper right corner. It says your machine is ready. Now you can press the button on the front of the X tool. I forgot to videotape my actual finger pressing the button. But now you can watch how far along it is in the process. And because it's kind of boring to watch the screen, let's switch to my other camera and watch the laser do its work. Because I want you to see how fast this process is, I am not going to speed up this video at all. over in the software, it actually tells us that it's complete. So now you can just cancel out of this project. If you'd like to save it so that you can make it again, you can do that also. So I hope you learned a couple things and 
at least saw how easy it is to engrave things with your X tool. Before you go, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. I love to hear from you.